the second chapter, we just finished up the first chapter and we, we spoke about how that the Lord commissioned the disciples uh, to go and tarry in Jerusalem. He was upon the earth 40 days and we know that he was seen of them uh, several times. But he commissioned them to go and to tarry in Jerusalem till they be endued with power from on high. We read last week where that he gave the the disciples that followed along behind him uh, and ministered for him out into the communities, he gave them special powers while he was here. They knew his powers and they were on the Mount of Transfiguration and they saw the glory of God. They saw the power of God in his works. They, they watched the power that went out from him and they watched the power that came through them because God gave it. And uh, so here is uh, the second chapter of the book of Acts. It, it talks about the beginning of the church and where it started. Now up to the time that Christ died, the law of Moses was still in effect. Christ did not do away with the law. He fulfilled the law. And, uh, but here on the day of Pentecost, which was 50 days, uh, after his ascension uh, or after his death he, he told them to tarry till they be endued with power from on high now this is a very very important part of our church and it's a very very important something that you know and understand and uh, there had to be evidence of this birth to the house of Israel it was important they required signs from God, and God gave signs. He appeared unto them, and they knew. And there was something happened here on this day that uh, has lasted through the generations of time. The power of God still exists in the church. Uh, we uh, sometimes, uh, because of, of different understandings, or maybe uh, a lack of understanding, maybe, uh, we, we differ on things, but we can differ. You know, the Bible says, Paul told Timothy, he said, no scripture is of any private interpretation. Uh, as God gives it and the Holy Ghost gives it to you is what's important. And how you understand it don't have to be exactly the way I see it. Uh, nobody has authorship on any of this but God. God gave his word to those that he inspired and they took the pen and God helped them to write it down and record it and then God preserved it through a lot of generations of time. So the word of God here is alive and we're going to study this, this evening about the day of Pentecost and uh, as, we, as we read it, well let's read a little bit and then we'll, we'll talk a little more. Our Heavenly Father, bless your word. God, open our hearts. God, enlighten us. God, charge our very souls, Lord, with the power of God. Lord, help us to understand that this was not born of man. The church is not a mere organization of people that believe in something. The church was given birth by God in heaven. He spoke it, he organized it, he gave it, it came down from heaven, and it came to those that followed his son on the earth. The church was not just organized, the church was born. And it was not just born of the flesh, it was born of the spirit. Yes. Heavenly Father, help us to understand the death. Lord, give us ears to hear God that we can hear the truth the meat Lord the deep things of God as you can reveal them to us in Jesus name Amen when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were with one accord in one place now we read last week about all of those that were there and there was about 120 uh, his mother was there the disciples were there. Many brethren was there. Jesus' brothers was there. 
there were about 120 of them there. But when the time came, now children, they done a lot of soul searching. They done a lot of waiting. They were patient. They knew that this Jesus they had followed would send his promise. He had promised them to send the comforter. He had promised them to send something that would keep them. And said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. It didn't say that they were fire, but it said they were like as of fire. They may have been fire, but I, I think they had the appearance of fire, whatever it was. And it was evidence and it was visual. They seen it. And it said there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. It came down, the power of God came down, it was visible, it was important for it to be visible, it had to be noted, it had to be recorded, Israel had to see it, they had to witness it, and the church had to feel it and receive it. But it says it set upon each of them, not one of them was left out, it was on all of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the third part of God. They were full of God. God came down and they were filled with His Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit enabled them to speak, they spoke. And it says that it, it was with other tongues. I want you to listen to it as, it as it teaches us here. It says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. Nobody was absent. They were there. This was a day that God had gathered them there. This was a day that God had given them the promise. And this was the day the church was born. And it would be evident and the Spirit of God set upon them like cloven tongues of fire. And it says that they were able to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them the ability to utter, or the ability to speak. It says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the news went out. The noise the, the talk, the, the, the witness. It says, uh, when it was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them in his own language. This was not a time of great confusion. This was not a time where some didn't understand. They all understood. There was no, uh, there was not a thing said here on that day, on the day the church was born, that was not understood. It said, now when the noise, it was noised abroad, the multitude came together. In other words, there was a great mob of people that were there. And they came together, and they were confounded. Everybody was abased. They were brought down to nothing because they had never seen anything like this. They had never heard anything like this. They had never experienced anything like this. And every one of them heard in his own language. Now, I don't know. Have you ever heard people speak you just couldn't understand? I have. I, I wonder sometimes what they were saying. But there was no confusion here, Brother Darcy. They understood because God was speaking. I've had a time or two in my life, in my experience, that I've heard somebody get up and speak 
in a language that I couldn't understand. But then there's been a few times, very few, I've been in a lot of uh, times where brothers and sisters of God were gathered together and I don't fight what they feel and I don't uh, teach uh, that it's wrong because everybody has their own relationship with God. But there have been a couple of three times that I have seen one rise up in a crowd and speak and I couldn't understand till God revealed it through somebody that spoke along with it. Uh, I think that Apostle Paul teaches us, because in the early church there was a lot of this speaking in tongues. There was a lot of speaking where nobody could understand. And Paul said it would be better to speak, I think, five words in, in something that the, people, the body could understand than to speak 10,000 words in a language that people couldn't understand. And then I've had the experience of some that belong to some of our apostolic brothers and ch their church. And I'm not against the apostolic because I believe that there's power in God and what a brother has, he has or he doesn't have. And I believe that God moves in different ways in things. But then I've had many come to me and ask me questions because they didn't understand it what was going down or what was happening in their services. So let me say this because I don't want to go beyond where I know to go. But let me say to you that God is all powerful and when God speaks you will understand. And when God has a message for you, He will show you what it means. But these were there and the church was born and many were there that were confounded. They needed understanding. And there were a lot there that made fun of it. A lot of them that were, that were there, we're going to read on and find out. They even said, well, they're drunk with wine. You know, they're, they're all drunk and just nobody knows what they're saying. But that was not the case. And I'd like to say to you that if the Spirit of God reveals Himself in whatever manner, today I've got some brothers that we don't agree on doctrine. But we love each other today. We love each other greatly, and I don't touch where they are, and they don't know how to touch where I am because, Brother Tim, I have my own relationship with God. And I want to get as close to Him as I can. I have sought God many times. If there's more, Lord, give it to me. I want it. Whatever it is, I want it. But I'll tell you what, God gives as we're able to receive. And God, there is no confusion when God speaks to you. But it says here, there was a multitude there, and it says they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Now, what they're saying here is, all of these people that are gathered here, they're Galileans. What does Galileans mean? It means from the area of Galilee. But it actually was what Joshua saw when he went into the land of Canaan. This was the land of the Philistines. This was the land of the people where God took this land from them because of their sins and gave it to His children. It was the land of promise. It was called in the other places the land of Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey. This Galilean area was one of 24 places that Solomon gave to the king of Tyre, Hiram, whenever he supplied the timbers for the temple. And Solomon gave him the gift of these 20 towns, 20 villages that made up this area. Uh, and I'd like to go on just a little further. This, this land that we're talking about, this land that God had given them was broken up into three regions. And uh, one of them was the region of Israel. One of them was the, the land of, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't bring it, but uh, is the land of the Samaritans to where the Jews didn't even walk through. But the Samaritans controlled this region, and then there was the Galilean region. 
There was, a, there was the upper Galilean region and there was the lower Galilean region. The lower Galilean was the plains of Galilee where there were many cities and villages and there was so much commerce and so many people there. And this is where the Lord done a lot of his ministry was in Galilee. And uh, these people were converted. There was many miracles done. And he called his disciples and they walked through these villages and they ministered to him. But there was the upper Galilee, which was the mountainous areas. But to just give you a little bit of, of idea, this was the land that God gave to his children. And here on the day of Pentecost, it was noise that uh, are not all of these that are speaking in all of these different languages. Are they not all Galileans? They had a way of speaking. They had their own language. But they never spoke a word here on this day of Pentecost that everybody didn't understand. Every man understood in his own language. They were from every nation under the earth, under the heavens. They were all there. And they all heard. It said, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? But said, how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, Cap Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and e in Egypt, and the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Amen. To bring something down that's so much bigger than me. When the church was born, the power of God came down. There was evidence that it came down. It came down with cloven tongues of fire, and I believe it was no different than the dove that came down when Jesus was born in the water, or not born in the water, but baptized in the water. By John the Baptist, the Bible says that a dove from heaven descended upon him, and God spoke on that day. And let me tell you something, God spoke on this day. It was not a time of confusion. It was a time of, of celebration. You know, under the law of Moses, God directed Moses that they have many feasts of celebration. You know, I think sometimes we don't celebrate God enough. But under the law of Moses, they had times that they, there was the Feast of the Tabernacles. There was just feast after feast, but there was a Feast of the Passover, and that would be the first month of their year, where that they would, everyone would gather a lamb, and it was a most special time. And for seven days before they ever done this, on the tenth day is when this started. But they took this little lamb and they made sure that everything was right with that little lamb, spotless lamb. And then on the 14th day of the month of Abib, they would kill it. And they would enjoy that in a most holy and humble and thankful way. And, and I think sometimes it's just a little bit of a, uh, something that we ought to understand when we think about the church being born and we think about who we are in the church, children, we ought to be the most humble and we ought to give celebration to the Passover of Jesus Christ for the giving of himself on Calvary, the blood that he shed, the body was broken. You know, every month here we, we gather together and we break bread and we... We drink of the wine that symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ in such a special time. But I think sometimes we ought to, I'm like Brother Nicewander used to say, he said we ought to celebrate it every time we get together. I know the Lord thought it was important when he gathered his disciples in there and they had their last supper together. And after that they went out and he went on to Calvary. But it was the most, it was the most wonderful time. 
And I think sometimes we, we think too lightly about what really happened. And I think sometimes we think too lightly about what our church really is. You know, we have a lot of denominations, and I've said a few things here this evening. I've got a lot of apostolic friends. I've got a lot of Baptist friends. I've got a lot of other friends in the Methodist church and other, other denominations, and we don't totally agree upon doctrine. We've got United Brethren. We've got the Church of Christ. We've got all kinds of people that says, I think this is the way it should be, and they gather together. Well, I, I'd like to say today, there's just one body in Christ. And it's not a time to misunderstand or question each other. And as we teach upon the speaking of tongues, I think it's so important to understand that God can speak. But if God speaks, it'll be understood. It won't be a time of confusion. It won't be a time where nobody knows what happened. I think it was very evident when the church was born that it came down with power and the Bible says it was like a rushing mighty wind. And it came down and it set upon each of them with cloven tongues like as unto fire. I think it was the most powerful demonstration I think the church, the 120 that were gathered there in one accord, there was no dis disharmony, there was no lack of harmony amongst them. They were all waiting, they were all uh, seeking God with pure hearts, waiting for the promise. And I'll tell you, there's nothing in the world like feeling the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 How many of you have had those spirit, those private times with God when His Spirit just blessed your soul. That's the most wonderful time. And it's not denominational. It's not something man can put his ad to or take away from. And it's not for everybody to understand everybody. It's about us communicating with God. Amen. It's about us receiving what God has in His fullness. And God won't withhold anything from you. It says here they were all amazed and they marveled. And some said, Behold, are not all these Galileans? And then we talked about all these countries as we went down through here that were there. They all had their own languages, but every one of them heard the message of God. It said they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to the other, What meaneth thou this? Others mocking, and the devil's always there. They said, these men are full of new wine. They're drunk. Have you ever been in that place with God the Word? If somebody had seen you, they'd have thought you was plumb silly. I have. I've had those times with God when it was the most special time. I had one coming down one time from Beckley coming down the interstate and I had to pull my car to the road because I just couldn't stand it. Other Tim, I know you've had those experiences. Other Randy, there's this so special time. Sometimes it's in the bedroom. Sometimes it's out of the barn. Sometimes it's on the hillside. Sometimes it's while you work, but God just comes down and just gives you the most special moving of His Spirit and you know it's Him. It's a wonderful time, brother. Well, that's what happened here. They were mocked, of course, but Peter stood standing up with the eleven. You see, we talked about last week about how that they appointed Matthew to be the twelfth disciple to follow. For this church to be complete like it should be, these were men that God was going to give special powers. And they had special powers. They saw special powers when Jesus walked among them. They saw special powers in the miracles that he done. And they were going to have these special. And let me say, let me say this, and I'll not go no further than this right now. But God still is God. And God still has these powers. And the church still possesses these powers. You know, it talks there when the Apostle Paul taught the church, the early church, about the gifts of the Holy Ghost. God still administers those gifts. And there's times we have them. 
And there have been times that I can say, praise God, I was able to be used of God. But there have been times just by the prayer of faith and touching a little baby, I've watched it come off the deathbed and be healed. I've seen that. I've touched adult people that were dying. There was no hope for them, physically speaking, from the doctors, but the prayer of faith. Let me tell you, if you touch God, God can do anything. Yes, and let me tell you, the church is not incomplete. And that's why I keep teaching you all, because I want you to grow in the Lord. And I want you to understand that God gives special gifts throughout the church. The church is not to be inadequate. Whatever we need, God can supply it. Whatever somebody out there in a sinful state needs, God can send the right man or the right woman and they can minister to them, to those that are sitting in darkness like they were when Jesus walked down the road. God can still give you special power to do special things if you seek Him. And let me say this. Of all the people and all the different ideas that people have and the different ways they worship God, it's kind of like whenever the disciples came to Jesus and they said, well, these are following John. Jesus said, don't fight that. If they're forced, they're not against us. Come on. <laughs> Amen. We may not all agree. We may have not all had the exact same experiences that others have had. I've had brothers and sisters tell me about experiences they've had with God. I've asked God many times, Lord, why haven't I had that kind of an experience? But I can tell you about experiences that I've had with God. And you might say, Brother Weston, I wish I had that experience. It's all of God. And it's all part of God. And you're no less part because you don't agree with somebody else or you've not had the same blessing as somebody else. This thing is of God and it's from God and it's for us to minister with. Yes. God is God. His church is adequate. His church is able. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able. Come on. Bless God, he's able. And we're able. Said Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Galilee and ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose. And seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. If one of you brothers or sisters would turn to the book of Joel in the Old Testament and get in the second chapter and read the 28th, 29th, maybe the 30th verse, you'll, you'll be able to read this to our church here. But he said, this is that which was spoken, spoken by the prophet Joel. He was one of the minor prophets, as we know. He said, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants will, and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. You see, it's not just for the men, children. It's for the women too. Amen. 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 It said, And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. He's speaking of the judgments that we've taught you about as we taught the book of Revelation. But somebody read that verse for me that Joel prophesied. It shall come to pass. Afterward, that I will pour out my spirit on the flesh, and 
your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the grave and terrible day before the Lord And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered as the Lord has said, and in the rain when the Lord shall fall. This was about eight or nine hundred years before Pentecost came. This was recorded, this was preserved, this was written by a man that God spoke to. This was preserved for us to know. There have been so many prophecies. I mean, they go in so many different directions. But it gives us record that God, when He does something, He'll let it be known. Amen? And on the day of Pentecost, and we're not going to dwell there much longer this evening, we're about finished. But let me tell you, on the day of Pentecost, it was known and it's been voiced ever since that day in the church was born and it was alive and it's still alive and the church of Jesus Christ is still alive and it still has the power of God that heads it up. Amen? Amen. I love you children. Jesus our Heavenly Father bless your precious word. God let us know that from the foundation of the church the power of God was administered. The believers waited till they received the promise. And God, we're so thankful that we have the same spirit. We're so thankful, Lord, that you still witness to us. And God, the voice of God is still heard through the church and through your children. Lord, the day that Peter rose up and he began to magnify you and to tell the people of that day that heard in their own language, from these Galileans, Lord, the same God speaks today. Lord, bless us, use us, help us to be a minister for you, Lord, in these last days in Jesus' name. God bless.